Okay guys, if you are into Panther platform cars at all, this is a video for you because I'm finally ready to sell my 1997 Lincoln Town Car. So in this video, this is going to be the for sale video, meaning this car is officially for sale. Now, I have had so many people reach out to me and offer to purchase this car long before I even had the cost tallied up and, and figured out basically what it was I was gonna sell it for. So I had to do some thinking. Who messaged me first? Who's gonna offer me more money? Am I leaving money on the table? Now, I'm not trying to be greedy in this, but I do just simply want to be fair. So in the event that there were so many different people who are interested in this car, I want to be fair. And the way that I'm going to do that is it's going to be a cash only sale, a cash in person sale. And the first person to bring me the cash is going to get the car. There'll be no money transfers. There'll be no PayPal's. There'll be none of that simply because it is so easily to be scammed. Uh, you know, I have to take for granted that I'm dealing with somebody who is a complete stranger who I have no idea who it is and I'm risking taking money from them. They're risking taking, uh, sending money to me and, and it possibly being lost uh, in there somewhere. So the idea is, is that we're going to be doing an in-person cash sale. This vehicle is going to be listed at the link down in the description box below. So if you guys want to take a look at all the pictures uh, that maybe there's something I didn't cover in this video, then well. Uh, that's where you're gonna go to find that listing. My contact information will be there as well uh, as in the about section on my YouTube channel right here. So I'll be plastering this thing all over the place. Uh, first person with the cash is going to come get it. What's the price? Well, like I said before, I did not have the uh, costs all tallied up and I did a little bit of market research and we are going to ask $4,500 Canadian for this car uh, and the first person to come in and lay that cash on my hands is gonna drive away with it. So I appreciate everyone uh, who has been watching the videos. It's been a real success on the YouTube channel. I uh, got lots of great views and I hope that this video uh, and this project will be a determining factor of me moving forward and doing more of these. As you guys know, we're trying to trade up. I wanna get this thing traded up to a three quarter ton truck uh, that can haul a big trailer. Uh, so this is just a start. Uh, with the initial investment of 500 bucks is what I bought the car for. I had to put money into it to fix it up. A lot of my own time and labor. So moving forward, 4,500 bucks, I can put that towards another vehicle. If you've got something to trade, I am 100% open to trade for something of equal value. So reach out to me. Hopefully we can put this deal together. Hopefully this thing is sold long before this video even comes out. And if it is, I'm going to make sure that I have video of the transaction going down and introduce you to the new buyer. My job here today with this video is to go over the car, tell you everything that I know and everything that a buyer would want to know when looking at a 25 year old car. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now folks, at any point during this video, I encourage you to pause the video if you have any questions and write them down below. But you can also go back to the playlist, which I'm going to leave down in the description box because uh, there's several videos on this car right from the time I bought it uh, right up till now when uh, we got it all cleaned up. We got it to pass inspection and uh, we're going to start this video off with where it started. And that's in the engine bay. As you guys recall from this video up here, it didn't run and we couldn't figure out why. As it turns out, the timing chain tensioner on the driver's side bank of cylinders had cracked and was leaking pressure. Therefore, there was no tension on the chain. The chain fell off. Long story short, we took the head off, we replaced a few valves, and we got everything back together. And we've put approximately 200 miles on this engine so far since that rebuild without any issues at all. As you can see, we got the engine bay all detailed up. Uh, the air conditioning on this car does not work. We'll go into that a little bit later. And the reason for that is, uh, is this pipe right here has let go. This, this seam, it just kind of pulled apart. So you can replace that hose and try and get this thing charged up. I can't guarantee that, that it's going to work, but the previous owner did tell me that the AC compressor was only changed uh, just a year or two ago. The battery here is pretty new. It's got an 04 of 21, so it was bought after April of 2021. It's a Motor Master battery from Canadian Tire here in Canada. 
uh, but uh, there will be no more warranty on that because it's changed hands. Uh, no problems getting this thing started, and at no point did I ever have to put this thing on boost uh, to get it to start, even after the whole time I was working on it. Uh, brake lines, all four brake lines are new on this car. Uh, when we first got the car, I did try to do a little bit of a burnout and, well, I failed because I lost brakes at the front, so I had to replace this brake. Uh, when I got in there, started looking at them, they were all bad. So it's got all new NICOP lines run all the way around, uh, and because we had to put all new lines, that means the brake fluid is 100% fresh. Uh, it's all clean brake fluid. Uh, because we had the head off and we had drained the uh, radiator, had all that out of there, the antifreeze is all new antifreeze and it tests to well below 40 below so you're good if you're keeping this thing in a northern climate actually right now some of you guys down in down as far as alabama are getting some pretty cold temperatures so either way this thing has antifreeze in it brand new well tested so as a disclaimer underneath the hood here uh, it does look like mice got into the under liner here a little bit uh, we were pulling some of that stuff out when we were cleaning out the engine bay uh, but uh, have not seen any signs of mice since uh, if you buy the car and you get mice with it, there's no extra charge for that. A couple other things that we did while we were under the hood is we did put a new belt on it as well as that uh, that idler uh, is new because it was uh, pretty noisy when we were working on this thing. So I did put a new idler on it as well. So the tires on this car are not brand new tires. They are Michelin. They are Michelin X Ice, which are one of the best winter tires here in Canada. Uh, but they are at about roughly 8, 30 seconds worth of tread is about the average all the way around. So a little better than half. And uh, the brakes on the inside, I've shown you guys in previous video, look like they've all been replaced recently. The rotors look new. The pads are nice and thick. Uh, we recently put uh, parking brakes inside uh, the rear hat. Uh, as well as we replaced the differential fluid because we, we pulled the axles uh, to replace those uh, parking brakes. Then we went and we put all new cables. We found out that all three cables were bad in one area or the other. Either they were seized or they were broken. So it's got a new cable right at the foot pedal, all the way back, and two uh, new rear cables in the back. The parking brake now works. We also had trouble with the horn. For some reason, the horn didn't work. Uh, sounded like a relay was corroded up or something. It was clicking, but it wasn't making contact. So it's got a new um, horn assembly donated from the O2 uh, Lincoln that we've got sitting around the corner over here. Now, there's not too many options on this car that don't work. It's a 25-year-old car. Uh, it's a Lincoln. It's got a lot of electrical gadgets, a lot of weird things that other cars just simply don't have the uh, trunk mechanism. So when you close the trunk, it soft closes. You don't have to slam it. You just have to click it and that mechanism will draw that thing closed. The air suspension still works. The previous owner said he replaced those bags several years ago, but nevertheless, they still work. The switch on the inside of the compartment that you're supposed to turn off when you lift this thing up on a hoist, that switch still works. And every once in a while, you can hear the compressor kick in to activate the air ride suspension. Uh, this car does come with a spare tire. It's a it's a compact spare. That's what I got with it. Uh, so I will put that back in here as well. Uh, so no fear. It's got a couple of rubber floor mats that will go on the interior when I sell the car. So after I just detailed it, I want to make sure everything looked clean for you guys. So when we go into the inside, you'll get to see that. And I want to show you how this mechanism works on this trunk. This is the mechanism here that draws tight. So when we close it, all we're going to do... Is give it a latch and you'll hear it suck it down and click it's done and the alignment isn't horrible on it either that lines up really really good on both sides this trunk lid was replaced as i mentioned in a previous video uh, and you can tell just by the haze of the paint job the paint job wasn't great uh, but it is black uh, compared to what i assume is the original paint here you can see the reflection of the camera uh, and over here it's a little more fuzzy we come around in that detail video, I pointed out that there are several spots on this car where the clear coat uh, has worn off. The bumpers are one spot on the tops of the fenders here. You can see it a little bit, uh, but the worst place is in the roof. And you'll see that as much buffing and cutting as I tried to do here, I didn't get it all, but it doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's a 25 year old car for sure down here on the leading edge this hood is aluminum uh, so the paint was actually chipped up a little bit here where the clear coat and i did do some touch up to cover up that aluminum uh, brand new wipers on it as well 
And as I mentioned before, there's not too many features on this car that don't work. Uh, the power mirrors, they all work. Uh, they're supposedly heated as well. And we'll get into all the features on the inside as we uh, make our way around there. It does have the uh, auto headlight uh, sensor right there on the dash so you can just put it on auto never have to touch it when it gets dark when you're driving down the road they just automatically come on and one last thing i want to point out is common thing on these fords was this leading edge of the door uh, grandma does it too uh, was a little bit tight around this windshield molding uh, and it would chip so you'll see there is some chipping uh, along that edge there uh, the car does have a couple of dents uh, one right here in the fender uh, it's very subtle hardly noticeable but it is there another one down here i don't know if you can see that on camera as i move down you might be able to see the reflection of the dent right there and down at the bottom of the driver's side rear door uh, there's a little bit of a dent right there a few parking lot dings you can see in the side here nothing major the numbers are actually wore off the keypad the keypad still works and i have the code for it so let's get inside and take a look at some of the features that we got in there starting in the rear. Back in the mid to late 90s, apparently ashtrays were still a thing. Nowadays, you don't see too many of them, if any at all. Uh, this rear door, as well as the other side, has ashtrays built into the door. One thing, the cover doesn't like to stay closed. If I close it like this, it's fine, but as I go down the road and hit some bumps, it will flop itself open. It does not like to stay closed, but Nevertheless, if you really wanted to get fussy and didn't want the ashtray, didn't care about it, you could dab a little bit of crazy glue on those little bumpers, close that up, never to be opened again. Back here, you got lots of leg room. Everything is clean. You got mat pockets in the back of each seat. And something that in 1997, this car had was cup holders in the back seat armrest. Grandma, my 2004 Grand Marquis, has the armrest that folds down. No cup holders. There's only two cup holders in the whole car. Uh, nevertheless, in 1997, in a Lincoln Signature Series, well, you got those cup holders back there. And as you can tell, the leather is in really great condition. I don't think too many people have sat back here, at least no kids, no pets, uh, no scratch marks anywhere. Uh, headliner, really good condition. The rear opera lights working there as well. We come inside and you can hear the dinging automatically. Is that because I have the keys in the ignition? Well, yes, but if I take the keys out, it still dings. Well. Most of the time, sometimes you take the key out and if you play with it, and just like that, if you wanted to frig around with it for a little while, you can get that to go out. Um, but there is a mechanism in there that is gummed up. I've tried blowing some air, uh, some silicone spray in there to, to clean things up, get it lubricated again. Uh, it doesn't seem to work all the time, but nevertheless, uh, that binger will stay on sometimes. This car is really loaded up nicely. Um, all your steering wheel controls are here for your cruise. Over here, you've got radio and fan control. A lot of vehicles don't have fan controls on them. See, I just tapped the steering wheel and it came back on again. So I just get in and close the door. As I was saying, a lot of vehicles don't have the fan controls on the steering wheel. They just have radio and cruise control and your Bluetooth if you've got it. As I mentioned, I fixed the horn. The horn's working now. It also has uh, automatic headlights, like I mentioned before, as well as what they call Twilight Sentinel. So you can set the delay on how long the headlights stay on after you turn the car off. That will aid you in getting into your home uh, or your garage or whatever without having to turn your lights on as you walk away. That will shut off on a predetermined set of time. Over here, everything works. Door locks, power mirrors, your seat has about 20 different functions on it. Uh, you've got memory seat, you've got heated seats for just the back or the bottom and the back. Uh, they do work on both sides of the vehicle. And there are a couple of more features here for lumbar as well as tilting the seat up and down. Down here in the door, you've got your fuel release as well as your trunk release, which is locking. Uh, it does have tilt steering, climate control, everything works there. AM, FM radio, the cassette does work. I did have the Beatles, which will come with the car. Uh, this is the Beatles Rock and Roll Music Volume 1. Uh, that will come with the car. This is a JBL sound system. Uh, not great, but, you know, for 1997, it wasn't horrible. Uh, over here, you've also got your glove box, uh, which will have all your storage in there. You've also got a separate 12-volt outlet down underneath the dash. You've also uh, got one in here. You've also got one here with your cup holders uh, and your working cigarette lighter, which this one here doesn't look like it's ever been used. 
and uh, down here is an ashtray or a change holder or whatever you want to use it for. Ford was really thinking with these dual visors on the Panther platforms. I think you get this in all of them. You can kind of keep this one over on the side as well as dip this one down to help block that sun while you're driving. Uh, it does have a little bit of sliding to it if you wanted to. I think that's a great feature. I use the back visor quite often because as a tall guy, if you're driving and you've got this down, well, you, you, you can't see the road. Guys, it's just, you can't see it. Even at its lowest position, uh, it still blocks out a fair amount here. So what I'll do is I'll swing this one away, I'll drop down this, and then I'll put this right back up here. This one doesn't dip down so far. These cars are catered to the elderly who may be sitting lower in the seat and maybe they're looking. Uh, you know right between the steering wheel and the dash or just above the steering wheel uh and this this just doesn't become a problem for them the rearview mirror is auto dimming uh for rear traffic coming up upon you there is a little crack uh not in the mirror itself but in the plastic right there and there's actually a little piece uh missing on the edge right there other than that you got a little bit of wear and tear the knob is missing the chrome over here and then over here you've got a few marks uh on the uh piece of trim here where the wood grain print is actually coming off of the piece of aluminum that's there and the top of the steering wheel actually has some wear on that leather as well go ahead and we'll start this thing up and as you can tell there are no lights on on the dash that are of any concern it's just telling me to fasten my seat belt here every once in a while the check engine light will come on for a heated o2 sensor um, it's on maybe 50% of the time that I drive it because it does take itself out uh, and pop back on once in a while. The uh, low washer fluid light would keep coming on. I did investigate that and that was the little float inside the washer reservoir it was not floating anymore. So I took it out. Uh, you won't have that indicator anymore, uh, nor will you have the annoying light binging on the dash for you. It's got a built-in compass, temperature gauge, fuel gauge, uh, there's the uh, 187 miles that I've put on this thing since I've owned it and since I've uh, get that engine fixed up. And uh, the actual trip computer does quite a few different things. So I'll go through the steps. So there's trip A, trip B, uh, trip remaining. I don't know what that does. Fuel remaining is about four gallons. Distance to empty is 92 miles. Fuel economy is about 12.1 miles per gallon. I do mostly town driving with this thing, so it's not great. Uh, and as you can tell, um, by the uh, average speed, 18 miles an hour. Uh, it does a lot of town driving. And then uh, back to trip A. This dash does switch from metric to standard. Right now it's showing 269,000 miles. If I hit the conversion button, it does it automatically. It shows that it's got 434,000 kilometers. And then when you go over here to your trip computer, all that automatically calculates as well. We're gonna talk a little bit about the underneath of the car and I'm gonna to try to go from memory so I can flash up some other videos, some previous videos where we took a look underneath the car. Uh, when we first started, we went underneath the car, starting from the front and going all the way to the back. We did notice a little bit of leak in the engine oil uh, coming from possibly the back of the um, pan gasket, could be a rear main seal, I don't know. The previous owner did mention that this vehicle was, uh, this engine was rebuilt at one point in time. Um, but for some reason, they didn't replace the timing chain or tensioners. So uh, we question that. Uh, the engine does run smooth. As we come back through the back, we also see that the frame rails are good. A little bit of surface rust, but nothing that really freaks me out. Nothing that would not pass it for inspection. No, no holes in the floor. Uh, gas tank is good and solid. There's no leaks there. You can't smell any fuel vapors, uh, you know, all that stuff still in really, really good shape. Uh, this car does have glass pack mufflers on it. I've mentioned that before. Um, I'm going to leave those on because I'm not going to do that job in case somebody wants to keep those glass pack mufflers on the car. I will, though, include a couple of stock replacement mufflers in the trunk. Uh, so whoever buys this will be getting uh, a couple of stock replacement mufflers should, should they choose to want to change that out themselves. The whole purpose of buying this car was not to keep it. It was to try and get it running, to fix it up, and flip it. And that's exactly what this video is for. And there you have it, guys. There is my 1997 Lincoln Town Car with 434,000 kilometers, 260,000 miles, whatever it was, 230,000 miles. Um, it's not perfect. It's got a few blemishes. It runs and drives 
excellent. It's probably more comfortable than any plant Panther platform car that I've ever driven. Uh, I love the heated leather. I love all the quirks and features, all the neat little things that it does. Uh, the parking brake. If you set the parking brake and you pull it and drive, it automatically disengages. I did not know this car does that. And according to some of you guys, a lot of Panther platform cars do. Um, the reason why I don't know that is because the emergency brakes aren't working on Grandma. And on Blackjack, well, they weren't working on it either. At the end of the day, guys, uh, we want to get this thing sold. I really appreciate uh, everyone who's uh, reached out. Uh, this car is being sold 100% as is. No warranty. I'm not standing behind anything, but you guys have seen all the work that I've done to it. Uh, I took a chance on buying it. You're taking a chance on buying it as well. Just like when I buy something, uh, you know, no matter what. This car and this purchase, uh, this sale, this transaction is 100% not um, associated with my used car business. This is me personally selling this car, uh, so there's no association with my business there at all. This is just 100% my vehicle selling or trading to you. So guys, I appreciate all the views. This was a really great eye opener. Uh, all these videos did very well for me and uh, I plan on doing more of it. We're gonna be trading this car up, whether it be with a cash sale or a trade, and moving up to that big three quarter ton heavy duty truck that I can use for towing vehicles with. So I appreciate those views, appreciate the comments. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you're not already, uh, subscribe to this channel because we've got lots more of this coming. And uh, please give this video a thumbs up. That way YouTube knows that we're doing a good job and hopefully they'll push this out to some other guys as well. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again in the next trade.